This is Punk Rock and Politics. Today is June 6, 2017, and this is episode number 25. Let's do this. These days are strange, it's true. I would bomb the shit out of them. If you think that punk rock doesn't mix with politics, you're wrong. Welcome to Punk Rock and Politics. Today we'll be talking to singer-songwriter William Cutting from the bands The Pikers and currently Pariah State about the Madison music scene, political and social intolerance from the left, and the current Russia hysteria. Then on Open Mic's last call, we'll take a little break from some politics and we'll talk about the podcast and ask you for some suggestions on how we can improve. So let's get to the political mosh pit, but first, here's the news of the week. Here's what's making news. <laughs> We need to work with allied democratic governments to reach international agreements that regulate cyberspace to prevent the spread of extremist terrorism and According to the head of the French government's cybersecurity agency, French investigators have found no traces of a Russian hacking group in the attack on President Emmanuel Macron's 2017 election campaign, in which thousands of emails were leaked to the public. President Trump pulls out of the Paris Climate Accord. In order to fulfill my solemn duty to protect America and its citizens, The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord, but begin negotiations to re-enter either the Paris Accord or in really entirely new transaction on terms that are fair to the United States, its businesses, its workers, its people, It's taxpayers. So we're getting out. In other news, President Trump announces his plan to privatize air traffic control. Today we're proposing to take American air travel into the future, finally. Finally. We will launch this air travel revolution by modernizing the outdated system of air traffic control. It's about time. The FAA has been trying to upgrade our nation's air traffic control system for a long period of years. But after billions and billions of tax dollars spent and the many years of delays, we're still stuck with an ancient, broken, antiquated, horrible system that doesn't work. At its core, our new plan will dramatically improve America's air traffic control system by turning it over to a self-financing nonprofit organization. This new entity will not need taxpayer money, which is very shocking when people hear that. They don't hear that too often. Under this new plan, the Federal Aviation Administration will focus firmly on what it does best, safety. A separate nonprofit entity would be charged with ensuring route efficiency, timely service, and a long-awaited reduction in delays. The move, if passed by Congress, would remove the job of tracking and guiding airplanes from the purview of the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA. And after recent terror attacks on the London Bridge in London, Theresa May proposes regulating the internet. We cannot allow this ideology the safe space it needs to breed. Yet that is precisely what the internet and the big companies that provide internet-based services provide. We need to work with allied democratic governments to reach international agreements that regulate cyberspace to prevent the spread of extremist and terrorism planning. And we need to do everything we can at home 
to reduce the risks of extremism online. And that's one more reason to hope Jeremy Corbyn wins in this Thursday's election. And on this day in rock history, June 6, 1962, the first Beatles recording session took place at Abbey Road Studios. The group recorded four tracks, one of which was the single Love Me Do. And that's the news of the week. William Cutting is a singer-songwriter from Madison, Wisconsin. His previous band, The Pikers, invoke the pub culture and its sound perfectly. His music is fun, but it still carries a heavy message. William is currently playing with the band Pariah State, but today we will be checking out his previously recorded music from The Pikers. I was able to talk with William, but before we get to the interview, let's check out one of his songs. Here's a happy song by The Pikers. I'm a catapult, we all know where I'm headed I'm a catapult, we all know where I've been What a much, much less hard And it weren't so damn predictable But mine, the fight is fixed What fixed so that I'd win When I was a boy, my father used to beat me Hit me on the floor and slap me in the face And now that I'm all grown and I have learned to fight back They fight me up in chops and slap me in a case But it's a happy song to love a love and it's a sing along To a love a love like that just play along To a love a love I don't need no bell so I'll just sing a happy song Catapult, rolling down the highway The world is flying by But I am still right here Distributing the news A bit to print a paper blues With a monkey on my back And a black cat on the wheel Every day when I return To my lonely little closet I light a cigarette And turn on the TV I crack open a can And pour a glass of rocker And wonder why the hell This is the way things have to be And it's a happy song To live a live And it's a sing along Crucifixion. She hasn't got a prayer, but still she prays for me I wish it weren't in vain, that I weren't causing so much pain But I guess that's what she gets, for having faith in me Cause I'm a catapult, we all know where I'm headed I'm a catapult, we all know where I've been I got one hand in my pocket, and the other wrapped around my dick I got a hand full of dust, and a bucket full of shit And it's a happy song, to love a love And it's a sing along, to a love a love like clap chops, play along To a love a love ah, I don't need no priest, cause I'll just sing a happy song Yeah, I don't need no hope, cause I'll just sing a happy song I don't have a future so I sing a happy song. And that was a happy song by the Pikers. And we have William Cuddling here uh, with <laughs> us. <laughs> Cutting with us. <laughs> it is. It, okay. It is Man, cutting, I, right? My name, either way, it's pretty much as accurate either way. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, and you asked before the technical difficulties, where did I come up with that name? Well, I came up with it about a day ago when I had to set up my Skype account to do this interview, and I figured, <laughs> well, you know, my last name is actually <clears throat> Sadkovich, and nobody can pronounce that shit, so I said, fuck it, I'll do William Cutting. And I watched Gangs in New York recently, yeah, and Bill Butcher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's based off a, a real person who, I mean, the the movie isn't accurate. His character is completely, well, different enough in the real world. He was a badass in the real world, too. But in the movie, they called him William Cutting. And in, in actual history, his name is William Poole. Mm-hmm. But I figure, what the fuck? Yeah. Hey, and now, now yeah. you have a badass stage name going forward. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah everyone there. needs a good stage I'll name. Actually, play a show again. It'll be awesome. Right. Well, speaking of playing shows, um, you're from Madison, Wisconsin. So, how is the scene there? 
I'm not really a part of it. Okay. I've always been sort of a, a bit of a, a bit of a, I don't know, man. I've tried to get a number of bands started over the years. I've written a lot of songs and I've gotten a lot of good feedback on them, but it seems every time I get a band, you know, we're on the bottom rung and we're about to reach that next lowly rung. It's like everybody just kind of craps out on me. And there are various reasons for that. And some of those reasons are my own fault. I would attribute some of the fault to the other members over the years as well. And in some cases, I'd quit because the band just sucked. <laughs> I, I pretty much attribute it to my bad luck, and I think there's a family curse. So, <laughs> but, but we managed to get these three songs recorded with my last band. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I thought they were good enough to get you know uh, exposure if somebody's interested in them. You know, I would like for people to hear my songs. Yeah, I mean, so. definitely, and um, that's awesome. And I, I, I dig them. They definitely are kind of um, different style each one. So, and they all have their own thing to offer. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's always the problem with a lot of bands is, is just sticking together. And then, like you said, getting to that next uh, level of creating music together. Well, you know, like trying to, I mean, when you think about it, it's like a, it's a volunteer organization and it's hard enough if you're paying people to keep them on the job, much less if they're making nothing, you right. know, I mean, mm -hmm. very difficult, especially, I could go on and on. Uh, no, the original question was, what do I think of the Madison music scene? I think the Madison music scene, from what uh, limited, ex limited exposure I've had to it, I find it to be very, say, nepotistic. <laughs> might be the right. word. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a problem in general with music nowadays. Mm -hmm. And part of the problem is that, like, uh, back in the day, live music used to be a thing. I mean, when my grandparents, I mean, man, they're fucking old. They're going back to the swing band days, right? <laughs> Yeah. used to go out and if they wanted to dance they went to see live music and musicians made good money back then they had musicians unions they had all sorts of good shit right but gradually rock and roll took over and you know and you had the discos they came in i mean rock and roll you can imagine the amount of musicians employed in a rock and roll band versus one of the old big bands back in the day you're oh, already yeah. putting in 90 percent of the band out of work yeah. but at least a rock band still makes some money playing live or selling albums, which is impossible to make money doing nowadays. Yeah, yeah. In fact, it's difficult to not lose money doing because of the recording costs, Yeah, assuming you don't have a record contract. Um, but then you had disco, and you had disco sort of died, but then it turned into techno and hip-hop. <laughs> the EDM and dance scene. Music. Yeah, the dance and music, yeah. Increasingly, the only people who go to actually see live music are musicians themselves. Yeah. And in a lot of the cases, I don't know why some people become established and others don't. It's like the cool kids table in high school, you know, some some people just have that whatever and they rise to the top. And then they it's there was a band in town called Barista Side who described the Madison music scene. And I quote as the Aurora Borealis of circle jerks. So <laughs> and they were definitely they had like very good seating at that particular circle jerks. So they, they weren't ones to complain, but they were fucking right. Well, at least you they know? called it called it out. I do appreciate that. Yeah. Mm. We played a couple of shows with them and like uh, we were called the new lepers back then. We were still playing the damn same damn songs because they were my songs. But yeah, that's the problem, man. It's increasingly it's like. The people who go to see the shows are the ones who play the shows, and the people who set up the shows are the ones who play the shows, and then they get their friends on the ticket, and it's not really what you might call like a meritocracy. It's more like a popularity contest, which music always is, right? But it's yeah. in the wrong sense. It's a popularity contest in terms of who's got the best personality, not in terms of who has the best songs. Back when it used to be that, you know, just your average Joe would come and see live music or whatever, it was the fans who decided yeah, who yeah. was a really good band. Now it's the bands who decides who's a really good band, and the bands are going to be like, oh, well, this is my friend's band, and this is my friend's band, and not just that, but that guy in that band, I don't fucking like him, and I'm going to shut him out of the scene. Or that guy, he has the wrong fucking ideas. I think he's wrong politically, so I'm going to shut him out of the scene. And it's really... Oh, it's really it's 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 really terrible for music. Yeah, definitely, and and um, I've noticed too um, in some scenes that they, uh, someone will create kind of like a website or a magazine or you know something like that, and then like you said, they'll kind of pick a few musicians and a few artists and always just highlight those specific artists. Well, kind of just leaving everyone else dry to the curb. 
Um, so there definitely is favoritism. And then that almost gives the perception that these bands are more popular than the other bands, which kind of drives this culture, which I, I, I almost kind of want to ask you, how much do you think like the internet uh, has to do with that change that you were describing? It would be, it's a difficult question because I think scenes, music scenes, scenes in general, clicks, whatever, they, they've always been, uh, to Around, use a word, yeah. use it incorrectly, nepotistic. It's always been being friends with somebody in power who has always, you know, garnered you favors. But I think the internet, I think people always lived in echo chambers, right? I mean, to, to one degree or another, but I think thanks to social media and, and smartphones, and maybe even even looking at it, maybe even the automobile, if you want to go far back enough, right? Uh, I think increasingly people live in not just echo chambers, but hermetically sealed echo chambers, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. Now, with the internet, they, especially. They are unwilling. They hate anybody who doesn't – some of them, not everybody. There are still open-minded people out there. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them really – if you say something that doesn't fucking jive with their worldview, it's like they're fucking like like in the old cartoons, it's like their head explodes or something. It's like <laughs> right, you can't right. cope with it, right. and you are you are automatically persona non grata. And this this is across the culture, right? And yes, uh, but it it definitely obviously affects music as well. And that and that problem is also uh, across the political spectrum because. You have people on the far left who freak out if you say anything or question anything um, about the left's ideology. And then same with on the right. If you say anything that questions the right ideology, they'll freak out <laughs> in the same way. So it's kind of oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah, I would actually I would say that the problem is more with the left in terms of mm -hmm. closed mindedness nowadays than it is with the right. And I'm with the left in some respects and on the right with the right on others. I'm not I'm not tribal politically, mm -hmm. but I would say that increasingly the roles have flipped. So like 30 years ago, it was the religious right that was attacking married with children for being, I don't know, sinful or whatever. And then it was Columbine. After that, it was Marilyn Manson and KMFDM and, yes. you know, yeah. Cal Fire Club or whoever. It's this damn music and these video games, Doom and whatever. Live crew and yeah, yeah. They were the ones who were were attacking freedom of expression and freedom of speech. But increasingly, twenty years down the line, it's it's the left that's doing it, and you see it at like uh, college campuses, <sighs> not allowing not allowing Stand certain people to speak at college campuses. Yeah, like Berkeley. You're you're near yeah. Berkeley. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've I've, I've I've driven through huh? Berkeley. I mean, you know, I I personally, I I agree. I'm not uh identical i'm not politically tribal like you said i love that yeah i'm definitely not but i do identify with the left on most things however i totally agree <laughs> with you on this about the um left being intolerant of uh hearing anyone else's perspective or their ideas or even wanting to have a dialogue yeah they they don't i mean what they do nowadays and their entire uh, well especially on university campuses and mm -hmm. i I've never been to university, but I live in a college town, Madison. The university oh, yeah, is, Madison. Mm -hmm. there would be no economy here if there were no university. This would be Youngstown, Ohio, or Janesville without the university, right? Yeah, well, in the state but capital. I mean, exposed, isn't that all? Yeah. I've been exposed to the culture since before I graduated high school. And uh, no, they're definitely very intolerant. I mean, the tactics they use nowadays, that's right, tactics. Somebody disagrees with them. It can be somebody as innocuous as uh, Jordan Peterson. I don't know if you know who he is, but oh, yeah. he's a he's a he's college professor. professor. Yeah, yeah, very In erudite, Toronto. very uh, well articulate, spoken, very articulate and, and calm. Well yeah, yes. not irrational uh, yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah. He's actually fucking brilliant if you yeah. listen to him. Yeah. But what they do, and I don't know. I don't remember what speech it was, but they, they just shout him down. There was mm -hmm. one university he had a, he was going to give a lecture at, and all the uh, SJWs came, and it was uh, – what were they saying? They were they were just doing these mindless sort of chants, these like yeah. mindless lobotomizing fucking slogans that they've been fed by their professors. Like uh, – and the professors very, very rarely ever show up because they're cowards. You know, they send their fucking – whatever but anyway it was like my uh transphobic piece of shit transphobic piece of shit and it's like okay the guy's trying to give a speech and they were blowing air horns and shit so that nobody could hear him talk nobody who fucking came to hear the guy talk could hear him fucking 
talk, right? Yeah. And that's stand crazy. Up. Like it's someone like uh, Ann Coulter, who same that happened in Berkeley, or uh, Milo and uh, Milo Yannanopoulos. Like those guys, those two. I understand why people would go and do the blowhorn and be crazy. I don't condone it, and I don't agree with it. However, it makes sense because Milo and Ann Coulter are bombastic, and they're kind of you know they're provocative. That's part of their stick. <laughs> However, sure. yeah, exactly. However, the the college professor we're talking about uh peterson right he he is he's like you said totally the opposite if anyone that you want to have a, a educated dialogue civil dialogue with it, it would be him but they them yelling him down is yeah. just it, it it's just it's counterproductive and like it makes the left who like i said i associate with it makes the left look horrible and um me being from the left i i don't like being associated with people who don't want to have civil conversations with anyone else like you know it's that's why we're being divided yeah all right so let's keep talking about some uh social justice warriors um but let's get to a song really quick and then we'll get back uh, more into that so let's hear um here's in the desert by the pikers I bless the ones who have escaped, but soon the toys shut in your face. Hate is strong, built to last, it grows and grows over the past. Love will work just like the rose, but hate is like the sea jack road. The ones that I remember best are the ones I most detest. They live in some thoughts and dreams that carved into my brain. You see, they sing and dance and carry on in a great uproar song. They tend to damn the poor refrain. Revenge is caught and life is pain. Lying, lying, bleeding, dying In the desert, crying, crying No one cares, so quit your fucking whining You will learn the meaning of pain You who's driven me, oh insane We all become what we hate And I'm okay with that The way to exercise his cause is by thought or ritual You find it as it's manifest and plunge a knife into his chest Don't forget this man by men should really much make sure it's dead So burn a body and bear it ahead and put your tools back in the shed And so one day I tried to down and fill his chest with a hungry man I watched him bleed, I watched him weep and loved it as it once saw me I cut off its arms, I cut off its legs, I cut off its nose, I cut off its head And made damn sure that it was dead and put my tools back in the shed Lying, lying, bleeding, dying In the desert, crying, crying No one cares, so quit your goddamn whining You will learn the meaning of pain You who's driven me, oh insane We all become what we hate And I'm okay with that For once you've crossed that bridge, my friend The spell is over, its spirit ends All right, so In the Desert, that song kind of has like a lot of meaning, you know. Uh, can you tell us about that? What What is that really written about, that song? Well, it's... Oh, man, it's not anything too specific it's more just about revenge and what drives people to take revenge and it's probably rather difficult to understand what the lyrics are because i speak them so fast although i don't really know because when i listen to it i already know what the lyrics are right <laughs> so like uh one of the lines is the ones that i remember best are the ones i most detest they live inside my thoughts and dreams they're carved into my brain you see <sighs> Shit, maybe it's almost about traumatic experiences. It's the shit that people do to you that drives you to do evil shit. Or rather, it's the evil shit that people do to you that drives you to do evil shit. Now, evil is like uh, it builds on itself, you know? Right. You do something terrible, 
right? Or somebody does something terrible to you, and then it eats away at you until it drives you to do something terrible to them or the family or their friends, and they come back at you. It's like, uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's like, kind of like uh, a whoa, fire, what's that old? fire I, burning out of makes, control or something. I, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's – uh, I put the uh, – uh, there's a picture of Jihadi John or something in the yeah, fucking uh, – on the YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I kind of thought after I, – I actually didn't have the fucking, you know, terrorists or jihadis in mind when I wrote it. Mm-hmm. I was I was literally speaking from personal experience, but I'm not an incredible – well, I – uh afterwards i was thinking man this perfectly describes hence hence i was still working on the lyric at the time mm-hmm. hence in the desert this perfectly describes a lot of the fucking you know uh terrorists who you know their lives have been fucked up you know that they've been mm-hmm. poor they've been maybe bombed to shit maybe mm-hmm. they've had family members killed whatever yeah i don't know it's it's really very broad swath or swath swath <laughs> um, man it's been affected in various ways in the Middle East. They're not like yes, yes. one thing. You got Sunnis, you got fucking uh, Shia. Shia, and then and you have the Kurds, Christians. Yeah. You got the Kurds. Yeah, you, you got all sorts of people who are pissed off for various reasons, and uh, they have, they are hopeless and they're in pain and they want to fucking hurt somebody. And you see that not not just with the terrorists, but you see it with fucking uh, you know, the people who shot up Columbine. Yeah. To, to a certain extent, anyway, I, I would assume that is their motivation. I don't know. And uh, th- these these people you see flipping their shit in and outside of the United States, it seems like they've been pushed. That's what that song's about. It's about being pushed too goddamn far. Right. And at the end of it, ostensibly, the guy gets out of it. He gets his revenge and then he lives happily ever after. But n- nobody really does. That's really interesting because, yeah, like you said, um, when I saw it, you, I got the links from you and um, I, it, it had the jihad guy and then in the deserts, the title. So it had that feeling. And then the lyrics, I was kind of making them out. And uh, yeah, I almost was thinking, is this about terrorists and about what's going on? It does have that's interesting how you wrote it in one context and then it kind of uh, changed, you know, when you upload yeah, it. But it still it, works. Still works, you know. Uh, I could be pretentious and say, like, uh, and I'm going to be pretentious. Uh, yeah, the huh. experience is universal. <laughs> <laughs> what well, kind of is in a certain sense, yeah, right? In a way. Technically, I, yeah, in a way. Yeah. I don't understand those people completely, but I understand a part of them. Because I've experienced, you know, and if I'd been in their situation, I might have ended up doing the same damn thing. Right. Doesn't excuse what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. But there's there's a video. I don't know if you've seen it. It's been online for about two years now. Um, but it's a British video, and it's a little girl, uh, like eight years old or something, but she's like celebrating her birthday and doing normal things. But then all of a sudden, halfway through the video, all these bombs start going off, and the world around her is like falling apart. And it shows how traumatic, like how traumatic that is you know for her and it's kind of like well this is what people in the middle east go through every day you know like bombs are going off while they're playing outside and then we're over here and we don't even understand that yet we're supporting both parties supporting this war that's being perpetuated that's creating more terrorists you know? oh, precisely and and the thing is that like uh both parties are in lockstep on foreign policy right exactly exactly Bernie Sanders, when he was running, he had the opportunity to disagree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he was, his I love I'm a Bernie guy, but his foreign policy uh, was tepid. Yeah. He was like, uh, I don't want to talk about it. I yeah. mean, that was based on foreign policy. He knows. Yeah, he you knows know? it's bad, but he knows we're so far deep into the shit. What can we do? Well, he could. Well, I mean, what could he have done? I mean, uh, all right. Trump's foreign policy so far is a bit of an enigma to me <laughs> because he threw the 59, was it, tomahawks at the Syrian air base yes, yeah. when mm-hmm. he said that that was a terrible idea like three years ago. Yeah, that, yep, yep. It was a terrible idea, mind you. Yeah. Um, so I'm not quite sure what he's getting at. Because with Trump, you never know. Exactly. Because he's both sides against one another. But with Bernie Sanders, well, oh, oh, this is what I was going to say. During the campaign, 
Uh, Trump made it very clear during the campaign, and I did vote for him, and I didn't like the guy to begin with, and I didn't agree with a lot of the shit he was saying, like, I'm not going to raise the minimum wage, it's like, well, fuck you, but Mm -hmm. what he did favor, and we've been, uh, let's say, embroiled, although that might be a bit of a misnomer when we're talking about a Cold War, Mm -hmm. we've been embroiled in a Cold War with Russia since at least the invasion of Ukraine, which was, by the way, it wasn't really an invasion. It was we organized a coup in Kiev, and then there was a resistance that the Russians backed exactly. with logistical supplies and weapons and, and probably some special forces, which is completely understandable because we helped to overflow a democratically elected legitimate representative yeah, of the country. Exactly. But Trump favored detente with Russia. He talked about it. He talked about negotiating with Putin and not having this sort of hawkish stance towards the other nuclear superpower in the world which just mm-hmm. to me seems to be it's not sane. just re- but only fucking sane yeah. right yeah yeah you don't all want to die we don't want to wipe off yeah. we don't want to wipe out like we know but and he did that during the campaign and, and kudos to him for doing that his foreign policy seems to have shifted but we don't know if he's trying to hoodwink people or whatever right. or and, or once he got in the deep state has stuff on him and he's basically now going along with the elitists because that's what that's he has possible. to do, you know. That's possible. Yeah. They certainly keep pushing the Russian narrative. Well, and well, that that's so funny you say that because you're from Wisconsin. You voted for Trump, so you're not. Are you a Russian? Are you a Russian spy sent here? To... Apparently, everybody is no, nowadays. I, well, yeah, well, no, because <laughs> every they want to say Russians hack the elections. Russians hack is like no. You know who? Like how? Why Trump won is because. There's what three, um, three uh, uh, states basically Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan that went for Trump. Yeah, so, and you Democrats voted for him, so in your Trump, state, you know, I mean, the Democrats have done jack shit. I mean, yeah, uh, and this yeah, is, yeah, yeah, we get to like, uh, well, well, my original point was that this, this do the original point. I'm trying to keep track of things here. Uh, <laughs> Trump. One of the reasons I voted for him is because he, he favored an anti-interventionist stance. And Hillary was like the complete opposite. Oh, she's yeah. she's, she's never war seen hawk. Her fucking like. I mean, yes. Libya was her war. Yep, yep. And look how that turned out. And mm-hmm. she's fucking up there on the campaign trail talking about fucking, uh, oh, we got to shoot down Russian jets over Syria. Got to set up a no fucking fly zone so we can support yeah. our jihadist fucking surrogates in the region. It's like, I'm not going to fucking vote for you. In fact, I'm going to vote against you. I'm going to vote for the fucking orange orangutan because <laughs> at least he's not fucking trying to get us all killed. Yeah, it's trying like, to push it, World War it, III. Like, yeah. I mean, but anyway, what what was it? I just want to finish that point. And then there was the... Uh, why people voted for Trump? Was that it? Well, and then, well, yeah, no, just those three states and uh, the media is pushing the Russian um, hacked the election and that didn't really stick. So now they're like, OK, well, we, Russia didn't hack the election. People aren't buying that bullshit. Oh, well, oh, now Trump's connected to Russia. <laughs> you know, so they keep oh, trying. Yeah, yeah. They, they keep pushing that because what uh-huh. he fired. I honestly, I can't even keep up with it. I it, gave up yeah, with it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you can't. So they're fucking... dropping. Yeah, they're dropping new shit every day. Sometimes one in the morning, one one at in the evening. Like, oh, like Trump said this to Michael Flynn, or oh, Trump Pence didn't hear this, and it. Right. And I got like fucking porn video on uh-huh. fucking porn hub of fucking Putin giving Trump a golden shower and they yeah. got all sorts yes. of yes yeah the dossier Bull- from BuzzFeed and then the other one is from uh, Washington oh, the- Post you know you know what a dossier really they called it a dossier because if uh-huh. you say anything in French it sounds really fucking important and significant <laughs> yeah but that dossier was big a joke the world is laughing I don't, at us i don't man. think it even they're exists. fucking laughing at no. us well and it's and have you noticed that every time that they have any of this shit it's always alleged or you know that's the word they're always using oh allegedly that's fine it's always unknown anonymous sources yes, anonymous and they never source, have yep. actually produced so much as a shred of evidence yeah. the only fucking i believe the only thing they actually revealed to the public in terms of evidence was the of aforementioned a dossier, mm-hmm. which was a fucking, it's like something you write to fucking penthouse. Yeah. I mean, fucking hell. And they didn't even know where it came from. Like, like yeah. a penthouse. Or actually, it wasn't even classy enough to be penthouse. It was Hustler. It was <laughs> terrible, man. 
man. Oh, well. it was, it's such nonsense. And they just – and, and the yeah. thing is they do. Just, this, this is just the, this barrage of bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And from 1984 or anybody in particular, but if you say it enough times, people are going to think it's true. Oh, yeah. And I think what they're doing because they keep say, they keep talking about it. It's connected with Russia and this and that. It's mm-hmm. like – Stop it. You're going to get us all fucking killed. Yeah. Shut the fuck up already. Do you know what you're doing? And like, it's they, also. And sure all of them do. Some of them do. Yeah, it's also his policies are just like that. I mean, I don't understand why people aren't focusing on his policies and what he's doing rather than just trying to attack him and his credibility. It's almost it kind of is just like the birther movement where oh Obama wasn't born in America or oh, Obama is, you know, uh, he's from Kenya and this and that. Like uh, they never focused on actually having a um, debate on the policies. They always would try to just insult obama and the left was like oh my god you guys are so so immature and now they're they're doing the same thing the left is doing the same thing that the right was doing for the past eight years two sides of the same coin man. yeah exactly exactly so it's not because i mean uh the trump was a figurehead in the birther movement right right Trump, trump's always been a fraud i just kind of like that was kind of like, his. That was his political claim to fame. I really feel like that's really what shot him into the um, political atmosphere. Is how he was really oh, pushing don't. that birther thing. All right, William. Well, before I let you go, how is the best? What's the best way for everyone to find the Pikers' music online? Oh, it's on a uh, CD Baby. Uh, you have to go to CD Baby, and well, shit. I mean, if you want to follow my music, which is what the Pikers was. Exactly. Uh, I'm no longer a member of the Pikers. The Pikers is just ne- Piker means somebody doesn't pay his fucking debts. So that was my last band. We never actually played a show under that fucking moniker. But if you want to follow me, there's nothing going on right now. But hopefully there will be in the future. Uh, you can go to a Facebook.com slash Pariah State WI, which is obviously short for Wisconsin. Or if you want to buy the songs for fifty cents a piece, it's like it's like buying a fucking Pepsi in nineteen ninety five. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, go to CD Baby and look up the Pikers and look up the songs by their name because there's another band called the Pikers on there that do like acapella covers of like I don't even fucking yeah, know. Yeah, I, I think I saw them on Facebook actually looking for. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I will put all the links uh, for the CD and then for the Facebook page uh, down below. So if anyone does want to check out more um, of William's music or check out the cu- uh, the Pikers, the links will be down below. Cool. All right, sounds good. Hey, well, right, hey, th- yeah, thanks, uh, William, for coming on Punk Rock and Politics. All right, yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. We're gonna have uh, one more uh, on our way out. Here's Angel by the Pikers. Oh, 
And now, Pariah State with uh, William Cutting. <laughs> and, you know, um, that was such an interesting interview. And before, we were trying to get a hold of each other. And um, I just, I messed him up because I told him. And we do, I do pretty much all the interviews here um, on the Punk Rock and Politics podcast via uh, Skype voice and I told him to use headphones and then of course the headphones messed up his Skype account and then my <laughs> and then my phone um I re- write all my notes and everything on my phone so then when I'm doing the podcast I usually uh will you know check on my notes so on my notes uh, spelling the spell check it didn't keep cutting it changed it to cuddling so <laughs> Then I introduced him a couple times as cuddling, and he was like, no, man, it's cutting. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I definitely want to uh, thank William Cutting for uh, being such a good sport, and I definitely wish him all the best of luck in his future endeavors. I don't know, like, his Facebook page is like uh, Putin with glasses, and that's his current thing, so it says it on hiatus. So William... You know, your songs are good, dude, and um, you got something going, so just keep going and keep making music. And, you know, not just for William, but I want to say that for everyone, you know. Um, If you guys just keep creating music and just creating, maybe even if music kind of gets old and tired, um, you know, like me personally. I mean, I used to be in a band and make music, and I would write music by myself, but I just kind of like, you know, shelved that, put it on hold for a while, because... Um, I just didn't have the time or the energy really to put to keep creating, but I that music in that version or that way. But I was like, ah, I need to create something. So I did like poetry and I did writing, which that's all online. And then you know, I eventually got to uh, the podcast here, which I love. It's just merging all of my passions all into one. So thanks so much for listening to the podcast and being there because if it wasn't for you, the audience, yes you listening right now (laughs) if it wasn't for you a lot of the bands wouldn't come on here um and then i wouldn't be able to talk to so many awesome huge bands like you know um the reagan youth and uh the challenge last week the their you know and um trapdoor social and so many awesome bands throughout the past six months so thank you uh you the audience for being here for us and listening to the podcast because the more people who are listening to the podcast and the more the reach of the podcast has the more uh bands will be able to attract and the larger acts will be able to track and then the larger acts will be able to bring in views and listens which will help the smaller bands which some of these smaller bands are so good and i really think um a lot of them need more attention and definitely once people 
find out and discover them, they're like, wow, these are amazing. Start listening more. I mean, I know I personally have added um, a handful of bands over the last six months that I now listen to that I wouldn't even know about before I did this podcast. So I hope my goal is at least you, the listener, you come to the podcast, you listen, get a little political views, whether you agree or disagree, that is totally okay. But, you know, just hear some political views, you know, get a little laugh here and there. And uh, here's some music. You may not always like the music. You may uh, kind of hate <laughs> some of the music sometimes. But I hope at least over the past uh, six months, you know, there's quite a, what, a 24 episodes now in the bucket. Uh, all probably 22 bands have been featured i think out of all 22 bands i think most everyone could at least find one or two bands that they really like and then you know support them it's all about supporting local music and it's not you know if your community doesn't have local music then go support local music in another community it's about supporting small bands they need the help these big huge um, bands that are, you know, making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, they, you know, you, you should support them, but they don't need the money and the support as much as these smaller bands. Um, if you only have so much money to buy vinyl, but you really want to get a vinyl, find one of these smaller acts that you think is really good and has potential. Buy their vinyl instead of the larger, you know, act the larger band's vinyl, and then maybe in the future the smaller band might go somewhere, and then now you have a, a printing of a vinyl that they only made a hundred. It was their first pressing of their first vinyl. I mean, any of the any band. Imagine having a huge band now. Um, imagine having their very very first pressing of you know their first run 100 you know having one of those that would be worth so much and then you would know you'd have that satisfaction of being um able to support them and boost them so that kind of brings me into the next um segment which you know we're in open mics last call welcome and once again welcome for making it this far in the uh podcast <laughs> um as some of my favorite uh, podcasters or radio hosts have said click and clack the Tapper brothers from NPR the car talk guys I don't know about cars and I don't really work on cars but whenever I'm driving around and that's on I love it but you know as they say think you've wasted another perfectly good hour listening to car talk so <laughs> I almost want to use that be like you wasted a perfectly good hour listening to punk rock and politics but that's not entirely true because you do discover new music on here but like I said, I wanted to move into the next segment and kind of talk about um, the podcast and where we're going and some ideas and things. So like I said, it's so important to support these smaller acts and then um, and these bands. But this medium, this form, um, it can't be successful without you uh i'm doing everything i can with getting good bands on here with trying to get my microphone um you know if there's any good local shows uh in southern california i go and i try to do a um a live interview i think those are always way way fun and turn out really good um but i can only do so much i'm doing as much as i can here on the podcast but i need everyone else to uh share you know if you know anyone who might like it share it um you know uh promote it any way you can we're on itunes google um google android pretty much uh tune in any um podcasting app we're on also youtube facebook twitter you know go follow us and uh invite some of your friends who are interested in music or interested in politics or maybe invite some of your friends who aren't really interested in politics and maybe this is kind of like a really really the diluted political show a lot of the bands aren't super super wonky every now and then we get a really musician who really knows their stuff and i like to get in depth with them that's totally cool but then on the other hand we have a lot of musicians and bands who you know they're passionate about something but they don't totally know they don't know who the um education secretary to the director you know is or they don't know who the specific um, gerrymandered district uh, representative is or what the specific law is and what it says in the law. They just know that there's a problem and they're passionate about a problem. So we talk about that. And I think a lot of people 
Um, they're, they don't know a lot about politics. Man, you have so much time to do. People have so much shit to do in the day. They don't have time to watch the news. And the news sucks anyways. They don't have time to read uh, all the news and all the blogs and watch everything and be able to shuffle through and see what is the most logical thing, which I'm able to do just because I'm a political nerd and that is my life. <laughs> I sacrifice my uh, social life to watch uh, the news, but I enjoy it. So I thank you so much for listening. Um, but if we can just promote the podcast a little bit more, that would be awesome. And we, I did start a Patreon, which I'm not <laughs> at all asking anyone to um, donate money, but I just wanted to start it because in the future, once the podcast is worthy of me asking for donations, which I do not think the podcast is at the point where I should be getting donations for it, um, but I'm setting it up just so eventually it will be there. And once I feel that the podcast is actually uh, radio quality or, you know, qual high enough quality and I'm bringing really, really good acts um, and interviews, then I think I'll probably ask for a little donations. But in the meantime, if you have any money, buy these bands' materials, buy their uh, merch, buy um, their songs, download them, or get a get a vinyl, whatever. I we're good here on the podcast. Uh, just share the podcast, follow us on Facebook. That helps us the most. But as far as money, please, please go and buy the band's merch. Um, you know, if you could just buy one song for ninety nine cents on iTunes, whatever. That helps these bands so much. And not only does it help them um, get a little bit money, you know, to get more gas in their tank you know, so they could do a little bit more tour or they can get a coffee so they could be a little actually awake on the road when they're driving. You know, we need to support them, but it also gives them encouragement being like, wow, more people are buying our albums. More people are listening to us on Spotify. More people are liking us on Facebook and sharing our posts and liking us or following us on Twitter, uh, following us on Instagram. All these bands have these social media outlets. So all I ask, um, you know, your humble host, all I ask is if you go hear a band you like, please go follow them. Um, and, you know, say it would be awesome if you're like, yay, I found you guys on the Punk Rock and Politics podcast. Good job. And I love your music. And now I'm going to buy your vinyl and buy your merch. And when you come in town, I'm going to go see you. And I'm going to tell 10 friends about you because <laughs> that's how we create bands. That's how we create a community. And I want to create a community and I want to push these bands that are good and the bands that you like i want to push all of them um because they all have something to offer um in their own unique way so let's support every single one of these bands um as much as just liking their facebook page but if you really 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 enjoy them go see them if they're uh in your area or buy their vinyl or buy their shirt and wear their shirt that's free advertising you're giving the band so you know, I'm going to wrap it up because I've been just ranting <laughs> long enough. But thanks so much for listening. We're six months into this podcast. I just wanted to say that's pretty cool. I didn't really think um, I would make it this far. But I definitely, I like I said a million times, I'm enjoying it. And I really hope you're enjoying it too. And I'm going to keep doing this. But we got to promote the podcast. And we got to get more people listening to the podcast. And then we got to help promote the bands so please share like us on facebook just punk rock and politics and on twitter we're prp underscore podcast but you could just search punk rock and politics will come up we're on pretty much everything so go check us out on social media and share us with your friends because we want to get as many people listening to these podcasts so we can get this music um these awesome bands out to as many people as possible so thanks so much and we will check you out next week peace thanks for checking out punk rock and politics if you enjoyed the show and the information brought to you please subscribe and share the podcast it helps us here at punk rock and politics but more importantly it helps the featured bands gain exposure also if you know any bands or musicians who would like to join the political mosh pit and have their music featured on the punk rock and politics podcast please email us at punkrockandpolitics at gmail.com thanks again and we'll see you next time and rock on political junkies
And I think our all our society is run by insane people for insane objects, mm. objectives. Doing a better job of talking to each other. The left hand now knows what the right hand is doing. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> and he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you.